Thank you, Prabhu. Om Magyana Timaranda Syagya Nanjana Shalakaya Chatsur Mili Tanyena Tasma Shri Guru Venamaha Vancha Kaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to speak to you today. It's one of the arrangements of this lockdown that we could have more time to sp spend here in Mayapur. And being here in Mayapur gives me the opportunity to speak to you. Usually I'm not in India this, this long. But very, very glad to have this opportunity. So speaking about enthusiasm and how to keep that enthusiasm, <laughs> right? We often find some people come, they're not enthusiastic at all. They have no enthusiasm. But they can get enthusiasm by association. If, they are associate, if we associate with people who are enthusiastic, we will also become enthusiastic. Enthusiasm is it's, it's contagious, you know? It's like COVID-19, you know, it's contagious. Somebody's got it, they can give it to other people. So similarly, enthusiasm is like that. It's contagious. If somebody has very great enthusiasm, he can also enthuse other people. 
So I, f I found Krishna consciousness to be like that. I was, you could say I was a little reluctant in the beginning when I first contacted Krishna consciousness. I was not sure if I was making the right commitment. I was not sure what, that what I'm doing is the right thing. But I always found enthusiastic devotees around me. And their conviction, their enthusiasm spread to me. And I just followed, their, followed them. And as Prabhu mentions, sometimes people have enthusiasm, but they lose it after some time. You know, we can see this phenomena. When you get something new, you can be quite enthusiastic in the beginning. But after some time, then you lose that enthusiasm. I mean, that's a common, a common experience with the material world. We get something, you know, like you may get a new computer for some time, and in the beginning it's really fun, but after a while you get really fed up with it, and it's really boring. Or you watch a movie, you watch the movie once, and you really like it, you watch it again, you really didn't like it so much. And you have to watch it a third time, it's really boring. So material relationships also get like that. You have a relationship with someone, and in the beginning you're really enthused, you really like them, you find great company with them. But then after, gradually as you get to know them, you get tired of them. Oh, they tell the same jokes. Oh, they do the same things all the time. And you, you, just, you just know everything about them and you get bored with them. So that's the material world. We have to be very careful not to bring this kind of consciousness into spiritual activities. When we talk about Krishna consciousness, Krishna consciousness is not like anything of the material world. Right? Material world, it's all temporary, it's all based on ignorance, it's not really blissful, it's rather it gives us a lot of misery. The nature of this material world is a lot of suffering. That's there all the time. That's always been there. Bhagavad Gita says like that. Right? Dukala yam ashasvatam. Mamupecha punarjanma dukala yam ashasvatam. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes the great souls who are yogis in devotion, they never return to this material world because they know it to be a temporary place of misery. There is a lot of misery here in the material world. It, and it's not just only because of this pandemic situation this year. The misery has been here all the time. That means millions of years. This world has been here for millions of years and from the beginning of the creation, it's been misery. And the miseries are especially more so in this age, which is called the Kali Yuga. Kali Yuga, the age of iron, or the age of irreligion, the age of all kinds of bad qualities. So the Krishna Consciousness Movement is to try to generate good qualities among the people, to teach the people what is, what is the proper standard of behavior, what is the proper standard of action. Just like we promote principles like uh, satyam, truthfulness, and sochyam, cleanliness, daya, Mercy, 
and tapa, austerity. These are considered the pillars of religion. So in, in a good society, in a civilized society, people will adopt these principles. Cleanliness, mercy, austerity and truthfulness. Very important qualities. Before becoming in contact with this Krishna consciousness movement, I was not a very good example of these qualities. Very difficult for most people in the Western world to have these kind of qualities. And we see even today in India that India is also very much affected by the Kali Yuga. People in India have also lost their appreciation for dharma, for religion. And they've lost their respect for religion and they don't know anything even about it, hardly. Because you could say one of the reasons is India is a secular state that they don't teach anybody about religion these days. They used to in the past. Maybe your grandfather in his times and forefathers, they were there in the times of India when it was still somewhat religious and pious. But today all of the good qualities have been lost because of the influence of modernization. Modernization simply means more sense gratification. Sometimes we talk about economic development and economic development is another way of talking about sense gratification. Gratifying our senses. And how do we gratify our senses? By eating and sleeping and mating and defending. And we're thinking this is happiness. This is the illusion. We're thinking we can find happiness through these four activities. But these are the activities of the dogs and the, the, the hogs, the camels, the asses. They're doing these things. If we want human life, we have to understand what is the, the value of human life. And human life is not meant for just living like the animals. The animals eat and sleep and make and defend. And if we also just only, if we think our human life is only for that, then we're wasting our life. Then we're just animals also. We are the Dvipada Pashu. We are the two-legged animal. So we have to be very careful to try to understand the importance of human life, how to use it properly. So this is the value of Krishna Consciousness, that when I met the Krishna Conscious devotees, the first devotees, then they taught me, they taught me by their own example, how to practice a better way of life, and how to be happy by the better way of life as well. We all want to be happy. Everyone's thinking about happiness. But the problem is we don't know where to get happiness. We are thinking we can get happiness by eating and people will go and eat the most horrible things. They will eat all kinds of un impure, unclean food. They will eat animal food, animal flesh, they will eat things from the sea, all full of disease, very bad for the body, very unhealthy. We don't know what is the proper standard for behavior. We don't know what things to eat and what not to eat. Therefore, we, people will eat everything. And sometimes people are so foolish, 
they're actually proud that they eat everything. You know, if you tell somebody, I'm a vegetarian, I, like to, I only eat Krishna prasadam, they will say, oh, I eat everything. And they're actually feeling good about it. They're so foolish. They're so ignorant. They don't realize that's the nature of the hog. The hog also eats everything. So people who live like a hog in this life, then in the next life, they will become a hog. They're preparing for the next life by the activities, by the things they do, by the things they eat. We want to be very conscious. One of the things which I learned from Krishna consciousness was that first we have to be conscious and then we become Krishna conscious. Many people, they're not even conscious of what they're doing. And that's why they do things like eat everything without any discrimination, without thinking about what is right and what is not. Just like in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes there are two kinds of nature. There is one called the divine nature, and there's another nature called the demoniac or the asuric nature. So you have daivi sampad and asuric sampad. Daivi sampad means the divine nature and asuric sampad means the demoniac nature. And Lord Krishna goes on to describe the qualities of this demoniac nature. He says, they don't know what should be done and what should not be done. In other words, they, they don't know what they're supposed to eat and what's not to be eaten. They don't have that sense of judgment. They're not able to put things in the proper place. Meaning, we, we don't have that training. So education is very important. You know, in India, people think education, oh, you get good education, you go to a school like IIT, you'll get the best education. But somebody may go to IIT and he may be completely uneducated about qualities of character and morality. Krishna consciousness is to give us the best education, to develop our spiritual qualities, our godly qualities, if you like. Uh, in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes the beginning of knowledge is to become humble and to give up pride. In material world, people are all very proud of their existence, they're proud of their position. But we have to give up that false pride and become humble. Why should we be humble? Well, one reason is because we are not the body. We are spirit souls. And the spirit soul is very small. The dimension of the spirit soul is given in the Bhagavad Gita. That if you take the tip of a hair and you divide that tip of the hair into 100 parts and then take one of these 100 parts and then divide it further into 100 parts, then that is the size of the soul. So our ego should be in proportion to our spiritual dimension. That is the proper understanding, to think of ourselves as a soul and knowing the soul to, very, to be very small and insignificant. Thinking ourselves to be the body is the illusion. That is what we would term as maya, or the illusory energy, where we think something which is false to be real. So the body is not real actually, this body is temporary, it's it's ignorant, but we are thinking the body is pleasure, the body is enjoyment, the body is 
going to give us real knowledge and we're thinking the goal of life to satisfy the senses and the tongue wants to taste so therefore we eat everything without distinction so very unfortunate we have to be very careful my spiritual teacher was from Calcutta maybe you've heard of him his name was Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada so Srila Prabhupada I met him when I was young, young man, just out of college. I just graduated from engineering and I was working in London and I met him and, well, he had come to London and I was already taking an interest in Krishna consciousness. So he impressed upon me the importance of spiritual practice, following principles. He said, human life is very rare, right? We know from the Vedas how there are 84 lakh different species of life and only 4 lakh are humans. So it's very rare. We're very fortunate to get the human body. But we're even more fortunate when we have the opportunity maybe to be born in Bharat Varsa and to have the association of devotees. You know, to get the association of devotees, something very rare. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is from here in Mayapur, he always glorified those people who are born in Bharat Varsa. He would say, Bharata Bhumiti Haila Manushya Janmaja. Janma Sartaka Kari Kara Para Upakar. Right? To take birth in the land of Bharat Vars is very fortunate, very good birth. Because in Bharat, Bharat Varsa, people have some appreciation, at least they used to, they had some appreciation for the Vedic culture. So one should make one's life per perfect and then he should teach others. He should give this information to others. He shouldn't just only keep it for himself. So this is very important. Uh, Prabhupada would explain there somewhat one person is a Brahmana and someone else is a Kripana. Brahmana is a generous person. If a Brahmana has something, he will give it. He will, he's willing to give it to others. He will sacrifice. There's an example in Srimad Bhagavatam, what we would, maybe you call Bhagavat Purana, the story of Dadichi, Dadichi Muni. He was a great sage living in Naimasharanya, just on the edge of Naimasharanya, over there in Uttar Pradesh. I don't know if it's still Uttar Pradesh, maybe they changed the name. Anyway, Naimasharanya is there, not far away from Delhi. Kanpur, that region. So Dadichi Muni was living in the forest and Indra, king of heaven, Indra had come there because Lord Indra had to fight a big demon, Vritasura, and he didn't know how to defeat him. And so he prayed to Lord Vishnu to help him. You see, it's the nature of a devotee, one who has good qualities, that when we have some problem, we will come to God to help us. Come, sometimes people say, when we have money, we'll only think of our money. But when we have problems, then we'll think of God. So Indra had a problem and he came to worship Lord Vishnu and he asked Lord Vishnu to help him. That uh, there's this demon, he's so big, I can't kill him, I don't know how to defeat him. So Lord Vishnu told Indra, well, I'm not going to kill him. You kill him yourself. Lord Vishnu didn't want to kill him. So Lord Vishnu told Indra how, how to kill him. He said, there's a great yogi called Dadichi. You go to Dadichi and ask him for the bones from his body. And then from the bones of his body, you can make a thunderbolt weapon and you can use that to kill the demon. <laughs> 
So Indra had to go to Dadichi Muni and ask him, please give me the bones from your body. Now how would you think if somebody came to you and asked you, can you give the bones from your body? I need your bones. You know, it's an unusual request. So Dadichi Muni was a great soul. You know, he, after hearing a little philosophy from Indra, he was obliged and he gave up his body and Indra could take his bones and he used it to make a weapon. It's a simple example of the generosity of a Brahman. Another example is there in the Bhagavad Gita. We see the example of how Dronacharya, Dronacharya had taught Abhimanu about fighting. Abhima, not Abhimanu, uh, Drishta Jumna. Drishta Jumna was born to kill Dronacharya. But he came to Dronacharya to teach him about the military arts. And Dronacharya accepted him, even though he knew this man has taken birth to kill me. Right? Maharaj Dropada had performed a great sacrifice to get a son who could kill Drona. And so Drishta Jumna was born to kill Drona. And Drishta Jumna came to, be, to get teaching from Drona. And Drona accepted him as his student and taught him. Why? Because it's my duty. He said, I'm a Brahmana. He's come to me, I have to teach him. He's asking me to teach him, I cannot refuse him. So, <laughs> this is something, the unusual nature of Brahmanas. On the other hand, somebody is Kripana, they're miserly. They don't want to do it, they don't want to give, just like somebody may have a lot of money. You know, they have a lot of money, what do they do with it? They just count it, they smell it. They play with it, they never spend it, you know. So that's miserly, what you would call in Hindi, kan kanjus, eh? kanjus baba. Mm. <laughs> they have money, they don't want to use it. So the same way somebody has a human form of life, if we don't use our human form of life for the service of the Supreme Lord, then we are also miserly. If we waste this opportunity, this valuable human form of life which has been given to us, if we don't use it properly, then we are miserly, we are kripanas. So the proper use of human life is described in Vedanta Sutra, atato brahma jignasa, that now you're a human being, you have to understand what is the difference between matter and spirit. If we understand this properly, then we will always be enthusiastic for Krishna consciousness. If we can, if you can understand the nature of the spiritual soul and spiritual existence, then you will never be morose. If you are morose, if you are feeling miserable, unhappy, this is because you're not Krishna conscious. One who is Krishna conscious, described in Bhagavad Gita, 18th chapter, Lord Krishna says, Brahma Bhuta Prasanatma Nashochati Nakanchati Samasarveshu Bhuteshu Madbhaktim Labhate Param. Brahma Bhuta Prasanatma, one who knows Brahman, who, who knows that they're not the body then prasanatma, they, they're a joyful soul. Another, if you're joyful, you will be enthusiastic. The Hare Krishna movement people, generally they're always happy, they're always joyful in spiritual bliss by performing the sankirtan of the holy name, by their spiritual activities by associating with Krishna and Krishna's devotees, we become enthusiastic, we awaken our spiritual nature. What is the nature of the soul? Satchit Ananda. 
eternal, full of knowledge and blissful, ananda. The material world is near anand. There's no real happiness, no real bliss, but there's the illusion of happiness. You have that illusion of happiness in the material world. Srila Prabhupada gives an example about the illusion of happiness. He talks about the camels in the desert. You know, you go to Rajasthan, you see these camels in the desert, Rajasthani desert there. So, what do the, the camels eat? They will, they, these animals are like that, they always look for something to eat. And sometimes these animals they will go and they will eat thorns. They will eat something on some like a berry tree which is full of thorns. So when they take the thorns, they will chew it and they will cut their tongue with the thorns because the thorns have these uh, sharp, sharp things on them and it pierces the tongue. And so when their tongues are pierced, the blood comes out of the tongue and the camel tastes the blood and he thinks, oh, very nice. The blood of the camel is very sweet. The camel is tasting his own blood and he's thinking, very nice, very good. This is the illusion of happiness. Well, material life is like this. The illusion of happiness. Real happiness is not in the body. Real happiness comes from the soul. And we awaken this spiritual happiness by simply chanting the Hare Krishna mantra and engaging in Krishna's service. By doing service for Krishna, we become, we become very happy, we become very joyful. What do you do in the material world? People, they get a job, they work in the office maybe, and then they need a weekend off, they get to the weekend, oh thank goodness, I don't need to go to work anymore. But in Krishna consciousness, we work every day. Every day we have our chanting, every day we have our programs, dancing and hearing about Krishna and serving Krishna. We don't need days off. We don't want days off. Rather, we're happy to be engaged in Krishna's service. Our life is service to Krishna. But where do you find people in the material world like that? People are all thinking, oh, I, I want to get a break, I want a day off, I want a holiday. Devotees, they don't want these things, they just want more service. The devotee just prays, please engage me in your service. Right? When we're chanting the Maha Mantra, our chanting is a prayer. Please, please engage me in your service. So we want you all to understand the importance of devotional service. When you understand the nature of devotional service, then you'll naturally be very enthusiastic for Krishna consciousness. Enthusiasm. It's, Prabhupada says, in, the, in everything you do, you have to have enthusiasm. And it's especially important in Krishna consciousness. How to get that enthusiasm? I said, association. You have to hear, you have to see the example of others who are enthusiastic. And how to keep that enthusiasm? You have to remind yourself what you're doing. You have to understand that, you're ve that we be, we're very fortunate, that we've been given something very precious. We've been given the opportunity to engage in this bhakti yoga, it's, which is something very rare, very, very rare. Prabhupada gives an example about how rare it is to come to devotional service. He says, just like if you go to the sea, in the middle of the ocean. You know, Prabhupada took the boat when he first went to America. So he saw how big the ocean was. He crossed the Atlantic in a little boat. 
He saw how, how big the ocean was. So, when you're in the middle of the ocean, there may be a log, somehow there's a piece of wood floating there in the ocean. And in, that, in the middle of that log, there's a hole in the middle of the log. And in the bottom of the ocean, there's a big turtle. And that turtle comes up from the bottom of the ocean and it puts its nose right through the hole in that log of wood. And so his nose gets stuck in the log of wood. You know, how rare it is that the whole ocean is so vast and there's this one piece of wood floating in the ocean and it happens that there's one hole in the middle of that piece of wood and the turtle comes and puts its nose right through that hole in the wood. Very, very rare. You know, the odds of something like that happening are just tremendous, very huge, very unlike. But this is what coming to Krishna consciousness is like. It's just like that. It's very rare. There are so many living entities all over the creation. There are an infinite number of universes and in each universe there's an infinite number of planets and on each planet there's an infinite number of living entities. Somehow we are so fortunate that we could be in the human form of life and we could be on this earth planet just only some 500 years after the appearance of the most merciful of all of the incarnations of Lord Krishna, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu comes only once in the day of Brahma. One day of Brahma, uh, uh, it said in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Sahasya, Sahasra Yuga Paryantam Aharyad Brahmano Vidu. Right? One thousand ages taken together is the day of Brahma. So 1, 000, in one thousand ages, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu comes one time. So his appearance is very rare. And he comes to give the most valuable thing, to make it available for everyone. This is described by one of the direct disciples of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, a person called Rupa Goswami. And he composed an, a nice verse describing Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He says, Namo Mahabhadanaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namane Gora Tavishe Namaha That of all the incarnations of Lord Krishna, this incarnation of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the most merciful because he's come to give freely the most valuable thing, Krishna Prem. So we are so fortunate that we have this opportunity to get this Krishna Prem, to develop this Krishna Prem, to come to the platform of being a devotee of Krishna and then going on to perfect our devotion to Krishna by developing love for Krishna. We all have the ability to love. We love our dog, you love your cat, you love your car, your motorbike, you love your handphone, you love your boyfriend or girlfriend, you love your family. But actually the person who we really love is Krishna. But we've forgotten Krishna. We've just forgotten all this. We've replaced Krishna with all of the other relationships, which are all very temporary. We come together in a family. We don't stay together forever. And often when we come together, we don't really know each other. We only know the body. But within the body is the soul. Just like when the father dies, you may say, my father has gone, but his body may be lying there. The body is still there. Who is gone? They say, no, my father is gone. And they say, well, look, his body is there, the body is there. But they say, no, he's gone. What has gone? The spiritual particle has gone from that body. 
and that spiritual particle, that is the real passion. So the passion which we actually love is not the body, but it's the spiritual particle within the body. And that spiritual particle is a part of the Supreme Lord Krishna. We're all part and parcel of Lord Krishna. We're not Krishna, but we are part and parcel of Krishna. The example is given like the drop of water in the ocean. The drop has all the qualities of the ocean, but different in quantity. So in the same way, we have a relationship with Krishna, but we've forgotten. We've forgotten our relationship with Krishna and instead we've replaced that relationship with so many other temporary relationships, all based on the body, all based on illusion. So we have to overcome this illusion. Therefore, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught everyone, you have to chant this Hare Krishna mantra. You have to chant regularly. This is the real medicine for material life. To overcome the disease of materialism, the ignorance of materialism, we have to chant the Maha Mantra. And we have to hear about Krishna. It's very, very important for us. This is the process of Krishna consciousness. Just like if you do yoga, if you practice, say, Astanga Yoga, Astanga Yoga begins with Yam and Niyam. Yam means the things you don't do. So in Krishna consciousness, we have things we don't do. No intoxication, no gambling, no illicit sex, no meat eating. And the Niyam are the things we do. We have to chant Hare Krishna Mantra. We have to read scripture like Bhagavad Gita. We have to worship Krishna. We have to eat sanctified food like prasadam. These are the kind of things we have to do. And when we do these things, you'll see the change. We'll, you can see how people change. That before, they may, have, they may have been very proud and angry and irritable and not very nice at all, but after becoming a devotee of Krishna, people really change and they develop good qualities. So it's very important for all of us to hear about Krishna, to practice this process of Krishna consciousness, and you'll see how it takes effect. And when you see yourself starting to change, then we'll become more and more enthusiastic. We'll become more and more eager to continue. And certainly we do change. We may not, sometimes people don't notice how they're changing, but actually we do change. Prabhupada gave the example, he said, just like you go in the aeroplane. So Prabhupada had traveled in the aeroplane, and he saw, he said, sometimes one minute you're on the ground, next minute you're up in the air over the city. So Krishna Consciousness is like that. One minute we're on the ground and next minute before, you don't even notice a big change, but you're up there, you're, you've, you've given up all the sinful activities, you've stopped all the bad habits and you start to develop the good qualities. Krishna Consciousness works like that. And as you see it working, you become more and more convinced, you have more and more faith and become more and more enthusiastic to continue this process. Why? Why we want to continue? Because it's a rare opportunity, as I said, to get the human form of life. So Prabhupada used to say to us, just give this one life for Krishna. We've already had so many lives. We've taken birth many, many times before, right? We know Bhagavad Gita, Krishna was saying to Arjuna, I instructed this knowledge to the sun god, Vivishwan. So Arjuna said, 
you know the sun god, you, you're the same age as me, Krishna, how could you tell the sun god about this? But Krishna said, no, many, many births both you and I have had, Arjuna. I can remember all my births, you do not. So this is the situation. We don't remember our previous births, but we've had many, many births in the past. So give this one life for Krishna. Take it very seriously and try to become Krishna conscious. And in this way, we can get the perfection of human life. We can get something which is very rare. What's that? Huh? No question answers. Okay. All right. So we'll stop here and we'll ask if there's some questions or answers. We'll try to answer. Yeah. So I request uh, all the boys to take this opportunity to ask a question, as we have uh, one session uh, before with uh, Guru Maharaj. So we have opportunity to ask question, uh, uh, especially in connection with today's topic. So today we are very fortunate to have uh, Maharaj. So Maharaj is practicing Krishna consciousness last 50 years. So, uh, so we, pra we face many difficulties in our uh, Krishna consciousness practice, many challenges. So we can ask any question like how to overcome those challenges and how to continue Krishna consciousness, remain enthusiastic. So therefore I request all devotees, you can uh, ask question, you can unmute yourself or you can uh, write down in the chat. Can I ask question? Yes, go ahead, Prabhu. Uh, uh, Hare Krishna, Prabhuji, Dandavar Prana. Uh, Prabhuji, my question is, uh, it is said that uh, the human soul uh, was always in association with Krishna, but then because uh, uh, we fell to this material earth somehow, and that's why we are struggling to go back. Now my question is, if we were already in association to Krishna, so we should not have had these uh, bad qualities that made us fall in this material world. So how can you understand that, Prabhupada? Well, we have to understand first of all that we have independence. We have some independence, free will. Krishna gives us free will to choose between Krishna and Maya. That's our free will. And as soon as we have a little objection to Krishna, unwillingness to sur surrender to Krishna, then we come to the material world. We come into the material world. And when we come into this material world, we're, then we're under the control of the material nature. And under the influence of the material nature, we develop these bad qualities. It comes due to our own independent nature, that we turned away from Krishna. We didn't want to surrender, we didn't want to accept Krishna as the Supreme. So we don't need to be with Krishna. As soon as we think again in a, in a, in a rebellious manner to Krishna, then immediately we come into the material world. And we come in this material world and we're given the opportunity to be a, to be a controller ourselves. Instead of being under Krishna's control, we think, I'm the controller. So we have that desire. So Krishna fulfills the desires, you see. Krishna doesn't force us that you have to stay here with me. Krishna doesn't say, you have to love me or else. No, you can't do like that. Love cannot be forced. It's natural, pure. So as soon as we don't want to love Krishna, then okay, go away. You don't have to be here, you go. You go into the other, go into the material world. And we come in this world and we're playing our own drama. We're thinking, I'm God, I'm the controller, I'm the center of the existence. Everything runs around me. We're thinking, I'm the best friend of everyone. We're thinking, I'm the overseer, I'm the permitter. 
You know, this is all the illusion of material life. So we, we're responsible. It's not Krishna's fault. It's our own fault. Krishna, we wanted it. So Krishna, okay, go ahead. You come into this material world, we come in this world, and then here we experience all the problems of the material world. We experience all the problems of being in the, uh, this illusion. And gradually we understand, actually, my real position is not to be the master, but to be the servant. And when we come back into the consciousness of being a servant, then we can think about going back to be with Krishna. Krishna is the master and we are his servants. But because we're thinking I'm the master and Krishna is just a competitor, and then we come into this world, material world. So it's like that. We have that independence, free will. We are called the marginal potency of the Lord. Krishna has three energies. There's the material energy, the spiritual energy, and the marginal energy, called tatasta shakti. Marginal, it can be either in the material or in the spiritual. Now, as you said, initially we were all Krishna conscious. We were there in the spiritual world. But we chose to come here. We made the decision. We chose to come. So, we have, we, we're, we're responsible for our destiny. And if we want to go back again, we have to change. We have to change our consciousness. We have to surrender to Krishna. We have to become a, a faithful servant of Krishna. We have to develop proper love for Krishna. Then we can go back to be with Krishna. Is it clear? Yes, Prabhuji. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prabhuji. Prana. There is one question in the chat now. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Krishna Maharaj. Maharaj, uh, in spite of uh, hearing so many lectures, so many instructions from our seniors, uh, we know that uh, spiritual Krishna consciousness is very important for us. Still we become uh, so ignorant that we don't uh, give so much importance to Krishna consciousness. So what to do with this character, uh, attitude Maharaj? Well, it may take, may have to take some more time. You have to experience more the difficulties of the material world. Sometimes we're not very convinced that there's a lot of suffering in the material world. Sometimes we're thinking that actually, well, other people, they're suffering, but I'm, I'm okay, I'll be all right, I'll enjoy, I'll be happy. We're thinking, I can, I, can I can avoid all the difficulties which everybody else found in the material world. Like that, we're thinking that we will not have the same problems which other people faced. We're not fully convinced of the nature of the material world, that it's a struggle, that there's a lot of problems, a lot of difficulty. And we're thinking, well, you know, I think I can overcome them, I think I'll do okay, I'll be happy. We have to understand the importance of spiritual life. As you said, often, although we hear so much, we're not, you know, we don't take it very seriously, we're not fully convinced. But, at some point in your life, it may happen that a change will come about, and you'll actually understand that, you know, this is really important. That Krishna consciousness is very important and you will regret that you've put it off and you've delayed it for so long. I know when I became a devotee, when I joined, I, you know, I was like 21, I thought, oh, I wasted so much time. If only I'd become a devotee earlier. I would have been, it would have been much better for me. So, time is such a valuable thing. 
Charikya Pandit said, you know, you can buy gold, but you cannot buy time. So we want to use time for something which is the most valuable thing. And we have to understand the value of Krishna consciousness. As you say, you know, you, you hear so much, but still you don't take it very seriously. When the, when the problems come, when the crisis comes, then you may start to take it more seriously. You may regret that you did not think more about it. You did not take it so seriously. Because this human life is temporary. It's, when it's finished, you don't know where you're going to take your next birth. You don't know, will you get the opportunity for Krishna consciousness again? You had so much opportunity in this life and you didn't take it. So why should you get the opportunity in the next life? Therefore, we have to be very careful, very, very careful, think very deeply about Krishna consciousness and understand the importance of it and how it is certainly the most valuable thing. Most valuable that it, it saves us from the greatest danger. And the danger is that now we have the human body, but we don't know in the future where we will be, what we will be. We know this life is temporary. We know we're not going to live forever. We have to leave the body one day. We have to think, where do you want to go? Where do you want to go? What kind of body do you want to get in the future? Is it important to you? If you don't care, then it's all right. If you don't mind to be a dog in the next life, okay, it doesn't matter. But you have to think about it. Do you care or not? Do you mind to be a tree in the next life and stand as a tree for a long time? What kind of body do you want? Where do you want to go? You know, that's why we people, you know, we study, we get education, you get degrees, you do a lot of work to get these things because you're thinking about the future. But we have to think also about the future life, not just only this, this life, but the future life, the next life. That is real intelligence. That takes real thoughtfulness. So you have to think deeply about these things and understand the importance of it. And then you will take Krishna consciousness very seriously. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Uh, next question from uh, Pranay Prabhu. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dandavat Pranam. Please accept my humble obeisances. I want to know, I want to know that how to increase more love in, in, the, in the holy name of the Lord. Thank you, Maharaj. More love in the holy name of the Lord. You have to chant more. Do more kirtan. Do more kirtan and associate more with the holy name. The more you chant, the more you develop the love for the Lord. Just like the example was given, if you have jaundice, what is the cure for jaundice? The cure, it used to be anyway, you have to drink sugar candy or sugar cane juice. And then it's very good, it helps the liver. But when you drink the sugar cane juice, it's very bitter. In the beginning it's very bitter because of the jaundice, you cannot taste the sweetness. So in the same way with the holy name, we don't taste the sweetness of the holy name in the beginning. You have to chant more, you have to do more kirtan, you have to chant more and more. Gradually you will awaken the love of the holy name. The love is there, you just have to awaken it, you have to remove all the contamination from the heart. Right? Lord Chaitanya says, Cheto Darpana Marjanam. The heart is like a mirror and it's all covered over with so much dirt. You have to clean the mirror. And when we clean the mirror of the heart, then we will develop the pure love of the Holy Name. So Sankirtan, very important. 
Tasmat Sankirtanam Vishnu Jagan Mangalam Amhasham. The, the chanting of the holy name destroys all sinful activities. It's the most auspicious activity in the three worlds. There's nothing more auspicious than the chanting of the holy names. So we have to practice this chanting. Practice, right? Constant practice. You have to keep chanting. Lord Chaitanya said, Kirtani Yasa Dahari. Always chant the holy name. So try to keep the holy name always on your tongue and in this way gradually the love will awaken. Hare Krishna. So uh, question, devotees can ask question. Any other question? Where? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, this is from Bapi Prabhu, <coughs> Dandavat Maharaj. Maharaj, I have practiced meditation since 2010 uh, by initiated a, a, a Himalayan Guru. Uh, so how can I, how can I engage myself in Krishna consciousness? Please guide me because sometime previous practice impress impress my mind. Yes. Okay, so you've associated with other people and they've taught you some meditation. I think silent meditation. So you have to understand the process of Krishna consciousness is what is recommended for this age. Silent meditation that was recommended in the Satya Yuga long ago. To practice silent meditation, it's described in the Bhagavad Gita what you have to do. You don't just sit at home. If you're going to do silent meditation, you're supposed to go to the Himalayas, you're supposed to go up the mountains and you go alone. And you sit alone and you sit and, ch and you sit and meditate completely alone without any fear. So who can do that kind of meditation? It is not practical in this age. It is not for everyone. There may be some rare soul who can do this, but it is very, very rare. And the progress will be very slow and with great difficulty. But if you take to the chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra, then the process is very rapid and very powerful, and very uh, blissful also. The process of silent meditation is very, you know, there's no bliss, there's no real pleasure there. But in chanting the holy name of Krishna, you can awaken really ecstasy, you can become ecstatic, you can feel the joy, you can feel the, pop, the bliss of the holy name. So this chanting of the holy name, this is the recommended process for this age. So you need to associate with the Hare Krishna devotees and with the Hare Krishna movement and take part in Kirtan and eat Krishna Prasadam and hear about Krishna. And in this way, I mean, you're already practiced in meditation, so your meditation will help you to chant the holy name. When you do the chanting on the beads, it should be very easy for you, very powerful. So I encourage you, you know, chant on the beats and chant at least 16 rounds every day and take part in all the programs with the devotees and you'll see how quick you can progress. Whereas the other process, the meditation you were performing, the progress is very slow and very difficult. Okay. Next question from uh, Supratik Prabhu. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, Dandavat Pranam. Sometime our family <coughs> is not favorable in Krishna consciousness. They demotivate us. So how to face uh, this problem and uh, remain enthusiastic in our practice of Krishna consciousness? Well, you have to understand the family, they're testing you. They want to see, are you really serious? You can see, you can, you can think of them as being sent by Krishna to test your determination 
and your conviction that what you're doing is the right thing. Yeah, family members, they will always be like that. They, everybody, family, they will always want, oh no, don't go to Krishna, you just stay with me. <laughs> the mother will say, you're my son, don't go to Krishna, like that. Family affection, the body, it's all based on the body. You have to understand the nature of that illusion and you have to transcend it. You have to cultivate your Krishna consciousness. Everyone has got a mother and father. Not only you, even the birds in the trees and the worms in the ground, the snakes, they've all got their mothers and fathers. Why are you so attached? Only the fortunate person has got a spiritual master and by the grace of the spiritual master you'll get Krishna. So try to take advantage of the opportunity of knowing the devotees and get connected to Krishna. And if you become a good devotee, your family will all benefit as well. Because you're doing devotional service, your mother and father, they'll get the greatest benefit. But if you just work in a job, what benefit will you give them? You give them some money, that's not real benefit. But if you become a nice devotee, if you become a good devotee, your mother and father, they get the blessings, they get good blessings from Krishna, that they brought a devotee into the world. And just like Prahlad Maharaj, he was worried about his father. His father was a big demon. So he was worried his father may go to hell because his father had tried to fight with Lord Nishingadev. But Lord Nishingadev said, no, it's okay. He said, your father is liberated because he's your father. And he said, not only your father, but your father, father, for many generations, they're all liberated because you're a pure devotee. So in the same way, if you become a good devotee, you can liberate all of your family members. Mm -hmm. All right? All right, where? So Siddharth Prok, you can ask uh, directly, unmute yourself and ask the question. And, uh, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj Ji, Pranam, please accept my humble obeisances at your lotus feet. Um, Guru Maharaj Ji, uh, when I joined Krishna Consciousness two years ago and I felt more and more, uh, um, more and more enthusiasm, uh, but uh, as you rightfully said Guru Maharaj Ji that the enthusiasm needs to be maintained. And uh, after this coronavirus and the lockdown duration, uh, we are having virtual classes. And uh, since I am also um, doing a job, I'm, I'm in service industry, I'm uh, counseling a lot of people over legal matters. So I'm finding it little difficult to uh, keep up with uh, my sadhana uh, as the days are progressing. Uh, I try to uh, reconcile my errors and try to keep my sadhana strong. but. I'm facing little difficulty, Guru Maharaj Ji, in maintaining that enthusiasm. Yes, there will always be difficulties. There will always be difficulties, everything we do. You can't expect there won't be any difficulties. But we have to see these as a test from Krishna. Krishna wants to see how sincere we are, that we really want to go back to Godhead, that we really want to develop our Krishna consciousness. So Krishna places these obstacles in our path just to test us. We have to be very, very convinced to overcome all of these things. Yeah, obstacles are going to be there all the time, everywhere. Don't think you can ever get away from that. That's going to come. So we have to see all these tests that these are an opportunity for us to increase our Krishna consciousness. Not that we reduce our Krishna consciousness, but we increase. Just like the glass of milk may be half full. So somebody says, oh, my glass is half empty. Somebody else says, oh, my glass is half full. They've both got the same amount of milk in the same glass. One says his glass is half empty. The other person says, my glass is half full. We have to be positive about everything. The difficulties which come are good. Yeah, the, these difficulties, they make it, uh, Queen Kunti prays to Krishna, let all the difficulties come again and again, 
Because the more I have difficulties, the more I will see you, Krishna, the more I will remember you. And by seeing you means no more birth and death. So like that, this is Queen Kunti's opinion about difficulties. She prays to Krishna, let, the, let me have more difficulties, because it helps me to become more Krishna conscious. And there's also another verse which says that one who tolerates all the difficulties, but goes on with his Krishna consciousness, then it becomes his rightful claim to become the unalloyed devotee of the Lord. We give the example, the Acharyas give the example, what does the son have to do to inherit the property of the father? Your father may be a rich man, he has a lot of property. What does the son need to do to inherit the property? The son just needs to stay alive. In course of time, the father is going to die, and then the son inherits the property of the father. So in the same way, we just have to stay alive in Krishna consciousness. Don't give up Krishna consciousness. Sometimes you may have a little difficulty, you may be a little short, you have to do more. You have, you know, okay, this is Maya, this is Krishna testing me, you have to increase we have to become more alert and more on the ball and get rid of the obstacles, right? Overcome the obstacles by taking shelter of Krishna. You just hold on to Krishna and all the obstacles will go away. Just like as soon as the sun comes out, all the mist, all the fog goes away. So Krishna consciousness, Krishna Surya Sam, Maya Haya Andhika. Yahan Krishna tahannahi mayaya adhikar. Krishna is like the sun and maya is like darkness. So wherever there is a son of Krishna, there can be no maya. So you ha we have to really hold on tightly to Krishna. Call out to Krishna, oh Krishna save me. Right? Call out to Krishna, chant his holy name and really take shelter of Krishna. And you'll see all these obstacles will just evaporate, they'll just disappear in the face of Krishna. Nothing can overcome Krishna. Thank no. you so much Guru Maharaj, your words have really entered my heart. Thank you so much Guru Maharaj Ji. Hare, Hare Krishna, Dandabhad. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Maharaj, I have one more question, Maharaj. While living in the association of devotees, we know that uh, the, for advancing in, uh, in uh, Krishna consciousness, association of devotees is very important. But after some times, uh, we uh, we find we, are, we started to get uh, finding faults in devotees. And irrespective, we know we already know that uh, association is very important, it's very rare. Still, we get a tendency that we find faults on the other devotees, and we are feeling really irritated. So how to get rid of this tendency with Maharaj? Yes, yes, this is something you have to be careful about, finding fault with devotees. So instead of finding fault with them, you have to praise the devotees, you have to see the good in the devotees. Instead of criticizing them, praise them, glorify them. And, and instead of uh, trying to run them down, become their servant, give service to the devotees. That's the, the, the process. The more we give service to the devotees, serving the devotees and get their blessing and praise the devotees, see the good and see the faults in ourselves. If we're seeing faults in others, it's very bad. We want to see our own faults, see our own faults and see the good in others. This is what we want to do. So you have to control the, that tendency. The mind has that tendency. It wants to look at the faults in others and we only see the good in ourselves. It should be the other way around. We should see the faults in ourselves and the good in others. Then we can actually have the proper mind. And if you're not able to actually see the good in others, then simply become the servant of the others and try to serve and be a humble servant. It's very important. 
if you, ha if you, you can be so fortunate to serve the devotees, it's a very glorious position to be the servant of the Vaishnavas. Because the servants of the Vaishnavas, they get the greatest mercy of Krishna. Right? Krishna says, of all kinds of worship, the worship of Lord Vishnu is the best. But even more important than the worship of Vishnu is the worship of those things in relation to Vishnu. So the devotees are in relation to Vishnu. And if you are able to serve the devotees, then it's very fortunate for you. You're very, very lucky. So try to get that opportunity to give service to the devotees. But it's not easy. It's not easy to get that opportunity to serve the devotees. Because the devotees are so humble. They don't want service. They won't take service. You have to try. This is the, the, the good qualities of the devotees. That they don't want to take service. They like to give service. So you have to develop this mood. To see the good in others and the faults in ourselves. It's the duty of the spiritual master to see faults. It's not the duty of every devotee to see. Prabhupada we used to say, he said, because I am honeycombed with faults, therefore I see faults in others. So if you're seeing faults in others, it means because, it's because you're full of faults yourself. So you have to reflect more on your, our own faults before you reflect on the faults of others. Okay. So, Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, we have one more devotee from Boys. He has a question. Maharaj, Hamil Lovisan says at your Lotus Street, how to develop selfless love to devotee in practicing Krishna consciousness of association of devotee? What, what kind of love? How to develop, how to set, develop selfless, selfless love to devotee in practicing Krishna consciousness of association of devotee. Faithless love. Selfless. Selfless. How to develop selfless love for oh, devotee. Selfless. Oh, selfless love. Oh, okay. To whom he is practicing Krishna Okay. Uh, selfless love for the devotees. Uh, well, mm, We have to want to purify our heart. The, the problem is because our heart has many anartas, many dirty things in the heart, many material desires, that's why we don't have selfless love for the devotees. Because we have a lot of pride and a lot of attachment in the heart. So if we want to develop that selfless love, we have to purify the heart. And the purification process is the Sankirtan, the chanting of the Holy Name. The purification is also devotional service. The devotional service itself will purify the heart of all the bad qualities. So, in the bodily concept of life, we want to take advantage, we love someone, for some motive, we want to get something. We see in material life like that, the man and the woman, they want to exploit each other for my sense gratification, for my pleasure. But on the spiritual platform, there is pure love. We don't think about self, it, it, it will be more selfless love. So there, that is pure love. And you see that example is highlighted in the Shikshastikam. In the final verse of Shikshastikam, you have the example of uh, Lord Chaitanya speaking in the mood of Srimati Radharani. When he says, Aslishyavapadaratam panastumam adarshanam marmatam karotu. Right? That you, know, you all know that verse probably. That I know no one but Krishna is my Lord, and he will always remain so, even though he may handle me roughly by his embrace, or make me broken hearted by not being present before me. He is free to do anything and everything with me, but he is always my worshipful Lord unconditionally. 
So this unconditional love, this is spoken about here in the final verse of Sri, Ma final verse of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Shikshastika. And Lord Chaitanya is explaining that uh, the nature of this love is that even though it may give you pain, but, you know, just like Krishna is described as lampata. Lampata means womanizer, that he's gone to other women. But Srimati Radharani, she said, she said if, if she's saying that if my unhappiness makes you happy, that is my happiness. Can you understand, you know, we don't see this kind of love in the material world. That my unha if my being unhappy makes you happy, then that's my happiness. <laughs> material world, everyone says, your duty is to make me happy. The man says to the wife, the wife says to the husband, your job is to make me happy, you should make me happy. But in the, in the, on the spiritual platform, there is selfless love, pure love. And the thinking is to make the other party happy, to make Krishna happy. And whatever Krishna wants, if it makes Krishna happy, that is our happiness. So this is something you can think about, try to develop this kind of love. This love, I, I say, it's not in the material world, this is the spiritual world. So you have to come to the transcendental platform to develop that kind of love. Hare Krishna. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna Paharaj. Yes. I have, uh, I have one more question from voice devotee Govind Prabhu. Yes. He is telling Hare Krishna. Let him, let him ask. As you, uh, okay. Hare Krishna Maharaj Dhanwar Pranam. As you said, one life should be dedicated to Krishna, but as we know, Maya is very powerful. So, lust attack in form of Maya and capture the mind, not able to concentrate anywhere. So, that time, Maharaj, what should uh, what should I can do? Man? Well, we have to conquer the lust. Lust is described in the Bhagavad Gita. Arjuna asked Krishna about this also, you know that we're, we perform sinful activities, unwilling, Krishna said, due to lust. So Krishna describes lust. He tells us where you'll find it, in the senses, in the mind, in the intelligence, and he tells us how to conquer it. You have to regulate the senses, and then you have to cultivate knowledge, pure knowledge, spiritual knowledge. So you have to hear, you have to read the scriptures, you have to understand the nature of this lust, how it's ignorance, the all-devouring sinful enemy, which burns like fire, is never satisfied. But you can conquer it by regulating the senses. So if you live with the devotees and you regulate your activities, eating and sleeping, following principles, then you can experience the pleasure. You'll get free from the lust. The lust will be transformed to love. You can develop pure love. But you have to cultivate that knowledge and you have to regulate your senses. You have to control the mind and senses. It's very important in every spiritual activity. You must control the mind and senses. So where there's lust, this means your mind is not controlled. You have to regulate the mind by chanting Hare Krishna mantra, read Bhagavad Gita. So that's described, third chapter Bhagavad Gita, how to conquer lust. You read that last section there in the Bhagavad Gita, third chapter. So? Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, my question is uh, usually a woman, I mean, uh, would, how can a woman be enthusiastic in Krishna consciousness? As for men, there is a lot of ashram, they can be full time uh, sannyasi. But for a woman, 
they can hardly get a chance to serve in temple and uh, they are usually asked to be at home and uh, take care of their family. In that case, how can we feel enthusiastic? Well, first of all, you have to understand you're not the body. It's not that only sannyasi can be enthusiastic. Everyone's supposed to be enthusiastic. Lord Chaitanya doesn't make distinction. Who is qualified to get Krishna Prem? Men, women, young, old, everyone can get Krishna Consciousness. So women can also become very enthusiastic and we have, very, we have a lot of enthusi enthusiastic women in the Krishna Consciousness Movement. And in the history of the Sampradaya, there's wonderful lady devotees. Lord Nityananda's wife, Janava Mati, was a wonderful devotee. And Lord Chaitanya's former wife, uh, 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 Vishnu Priya, and then also Ganga Mata Goswamini, she was a great devotee, she lived in Jagannath Puri. And then there was also, there was this uh, Hemalata Thakurani, she was the daughter of a great devotee, Srinivas Acharya, and she was also a great devotee. And so there are many great lady spiritual teachers, and, and they do wonderful service. You have a family, not a problem. A family is an advantage to keep you in Krishna consciousness. Because with the family you can perform kirtan. So in your home, you should have a temple in your home. You don't, you don't need to always go to a temple. Maybe you're far away from the temple. If you can go to a temple, it's nice. But if not, you have to have a temple at home. And in the home, you do kirtan with the family, with the children. And your children should be nice devotees. And they will keep you in Krishna consciousness. And the children can also learn the philosophy and recite slokas and recite prayers and do the puja. And so family is a great advantage to becoming Krishna conscious. You have to see everything as an advantage. Don't think always the disadvantage. You, be positive. There is a great advantage to have a woman's body sometimes. Because a woman, women will get married, they'll have children, very nice. It's a great service for Krishna. We need many devotees. We need many pure devotees. Whether they're men or women, it's, that doesn't matter. Lord Chaitanya had intimate de devotees. There was a Swarup Damodar. Ramananda Rai, Sikhi Mahiti, and the, th the fourth person who was intimate with Lord Chaitanya was the sister of Sikhi Mahiti. And so, also ladies, intimate associates of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So don't feel it's a disadvantage. Okay, Maharaj, thank you. Thank you. The head of our movement is Srimati Radharani. We're all trying to get the blessings of Srimati Radharani. And so, you know, the women are way at the top of this movement. Haribol. Haribol. Okay. So thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to speak to all of you today. I hope it was some advantage to you. It certainly was nice for me. I'm very happy with your questions. Very nice. I hope I'll meet you all again sometime. May Srila Prabhupada bless all of you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.